Welcome you in to Pioneer Basketball with Pioneer coach Devin Carr. The Pioneers embarked on a huge week after coming off a loss last week. The Pioneers are looking to rebound against that loss against the Catawba Indians. Could they do it against two very strong teams under the South Atlantic Conference and making their way up through the middle of the pack, the Lenoran Bears and the Newberry Wolves. Hello everyone, I'm Brian State and joined by the coach, Pioneer coach Devin Carter. A Pioneer team that goes on the road to Hickory, never an easy place to go play, uh, much less go and win. You've had that success here over the last couple of seasons, but it hasn't been easy when you have gone there. And now you're going there without your leading scorer in Sidney Wilson uh, coming off the uh, injury. The diagnosis still well up in the air. You're not really sure. And all of a sudden, Casey Johnson has the type of game that she has. Man, and, and we needed every bit of it. Um, I had a monster night. I tell people all the time, you know, going to Newberry, going to LR for me are the two places I just dread going to uh, just because you feel like you're never going to make shots and it's, it's a tough place to play. And, you know, uh, LR is hot and Newberry is cold and it's just, you know, it's just two tough places to play. And uh, so, you know, going on the road, you need seniors to step up. And I felt like Casey did a great job of that. I mean, you know, we went to her early and often. And um, man, I mean, a career night for her. Uh, she was spectacular, shooting it, scoring it, rebounding the ball. Uh, we needed every bit of it. Got every bit of it. She played every second of the contest that went into double overtime. But before we really even get into that, early guys knocked down shots. Guys uh, made things look early, and then they run into the adversity mm -hmm. for Lenore Ryan. They they lose. Uh, uh, Madeline Hardy and that was a huge loss for them but their team really rallied now that was very early that was in the first quarter mm -hmm. and you guys still were able to even withstand that emotional change uh, especially against them through three quarters of play yeah and you know uh, prayers to her um, you know she's had successful surgery um, you know on her knee um, anytime you something like that happens man you just you just pray for the kid yeah uh, obviously their best player uh, and, and, you know, I think that that's just a, a concerning trend, I guess, in our league. You know, right. um, I, I, somebody told me the other day that, you know, three of the top players in the league went out to knee injury, Sid Wilson, Sunita Webb, and, and then Hardy. And so, you know, anytime, you, you know, obviously we went through that with Newberry, I mean with uh, Catawba. Yeah. Uh, anytime that happens, your team has to find a way to bounce back. And, you know, our kids were shook, shook up from it as well. Yeah. And um, I think that, you know, after the injury, I think LR, you know, kind of, they, they, they picked it up a little bit like they were playing hard they were they were knocking in shots and, and they were really tough to guard obviously playing for her and so um, to withstand that emotional uh, you know incident and then to be able to come down the stretch and, and you know uh, the fourth quarter hits and we deal with that adversity and, and to close out the game in the second overtime though you know credit to our kids it wasn't pretty uh, but they found a way. Ashley Woodruff was solid. I think she's going to show why she'll be one of the more dangerous players in our league. Just a young freshman. She finishes with 27 for LR. Uh, Tusculum seemed to, to me, seemingly had some things under control. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you get into that fourth quarter, um, and then she didn't take over, but she was kind of that quiet assassin. She mm -hmm. kind of had a, a very solid game, and she made two huge plays, I felt like, in the fourth quarter, knocked the ball away and finished, and it really gave them some momentum. For sure. Uh, Going to be a really, really good player. Um, athletic, fast, uh, strong. I think she does a great job of just changing the pace for them and, and pushing pace. And then, you know, I think that, you know, she's a defender as well. So. Yeah. Uh, for us, um, you know, obviously she had a big night and, and we tried to contain her best we could. Uh, we tried to, you know, allow, allow her to shoot jump shots. She made jump shots. We tried to, you know, sag off of her and she made plays for others. So I uh, did a really good job for them and, and, and getting them into their stuff and, and pushing pace. And uh, we had to... Uh, you know, try to try to lock that up going into the overtimes because if not, we're going to be in trouble. All right. So the craziest things that happened: uh, five, thirteen seconds to play. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't imagine things like this that uh, do happen. Just didn't close out the game very mm -hmm. well. Um, it missed a couple of free throws there down the stretch. The game's put away. Uh, they go in down three and decide to go. Uh, Woodruff goes in, makes the layup. They actually steal the inbound with. 0.4 seconds to play. Draw mm -hmm. the foul. Miss a free throw. Make it. Send it to overtime go to the second overtime really you know as good as you play mm -hmm. you're lucky to win the basketball lucky game. to win the basketball game and, and and you know i tell our kids all the time i mean how you respond to adversity is the true measure of who you are and i think that you know we didn't respond to to adversity uh the way that we should 13 seconds ago you have five you got to finish the game and and I tell the girls all the time, my career ended on a foul line blockout, and we almost lost the game because of a foul line blockout. 
um, you know, we, we, we come down, we're, we're up uh, eight, I think, and, and or five, whichever one it was, and we foul on an and one uh, when you can't foul in that situation. And then, you know, the person that fouled goes and, and, and doesn't block out on the foul line block out. Their man gets the ball, and then we foul. Very fortunate to, to come out with that. And then, you know, you get into the, the overtime situations, it's the same deal. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we, we've got to finish games better. And, and I tell you how it impacted us because you, you're going and putting extra minutes on your kids' legs uh, when you didn't even have to. And so, you know, that LR game, it, it took a lot out of us on the road. You're traveling, you know, three some plus hours. And then you go into a double overtime game, which is basically almost another half, another quarter. And, um, you know, it, it really shouldn't have got to that. But, you know, we found a way to get it done and, and get one done on the road uh, at a really tough place to play. Pioneers do that. They get 34 from Casey Johnson, a uh, career best for her, played every second. They get 25 out of Mia Long, one shy of her career best. It's her career best at Tusculum. And the Pioneers get an 88-84 double overtime victory. Pioneers, uh, first time probably in over 15 years where they have swept the Bears, men and women, for the season. It was not easy in the first one, and the uh, radio announcer definitely took it hard into the second game. I, I just took the, the first half off. Uh, in that second game because I was tired. I mean, even Coach Carter said, my watch tells me I've gone through a full workout. I had, I felt that too, yes. for sure. Yes, uh, it was uh, definitely um, a, uh, a workout. Um, I remember uh, when I was coming out of high school and I took a visit to Lenore Ryan, um, Coach John Lentz was the coach. And yeah. uh, I remember going into their gym like, man, this place is incredibly hot. Yeah. And then uh, my mom and dad are sitting up in there sweating and they were actually playing Catawba at the game. And um, I was like, man, like I, I left the game. Like I just sat in the stands, felt like I worked out. Well, now coaching in it felt like a, uh, yeah. a double workout. And uh, they're, they say they have air conditioning there and, and I don't believe it because yeah. uh, I almost sweated through my suit. And um, you know, definitely uh, just a, a tough place to play, a historic place to play, and uh, I think one of the places that makes the sack the sack. Hey, no question about it. He did actually have to take the jacket off at one point. So yes. I don't think that's because it was hot. Right. I, maybe, I, maybe I was wrong there, but he, he did take the, the jacket off. In all seriousness, no, Madeline Hardy, we're thinking of you, and uh, unfortunate that situation happened. I hate to see those types of things in, in a contest, and best of luck to the Lenore Ryan Bears going forward. For the Pioneers then, they turn their attention to Newberry, and you're still without Sidney Wilson. You still have these question marks going on, and uh, you come into a Saturday, and they're playing some of the best basketball right now in mm-hmm. our league. Yeah, they are, and, um, you know, I think that, you know, a uh, team like Newberry, uh, you know, you want to be playing your best basketball at the right time. They're playing really good basketball right now. And, and you know, I think, you know, coming off of LR, um, you know, that, that game took a lot out of us. And, and we didn't practice on Thursday, got up shots. And uh, we had a day to prep for Newberry. And uh, Newberry is obviously a difficult guard. Uh, they're very skilled. Uh, they're very, uh, they have good size. Um, you know, they have some athletic kids on their roster now. So, you know, we knew we were going to have our work cut out for us, uh, you know, uh, with them. Uh, very well coached, and uh, we were going to have to try to come and protect home court. Let's take a look at the highlights. It's Tusculum versus the Newberry Wolves when the Pioneers went down there to Eliezer Arena. Seems like ages ago by now. The Pioneers got out to a good lead, and that's exactly what Newberry did. They built a 15-point first quarter lead. What were some of the things that were, you were really struggling with in, in guarding them? Uh, details. I mean, you know, I think that at the end of the day, um, you know, you eliminate the first quarter, um, may not seem like it. We won the rest of the game. I mean, yeah. we, uh, we won three quarters, um, you know, and, and, and really did a better job defensively. Um, but you spot a team like Newberry 15 points and, and you're not going to get that done. So um, I think that, you know, for us, the details of, of personnel and everything um, was, was, was what killed us in the first half. Uh, you know, particularly the first quarter. They did a great job of knocking down shots, too. They knocked down some contested shots. Um, They did a great job of getting the ball in best player's hands. Uh, McDermott had a big night. Um, I I think that's the best night she's ever had against us. She stepped up like a senior should um, and uh, really gave them a boost on the road. Uh, I was more so impressed with her passing as well. Uh, Did a great job passing the ball. And, um, you know, they came in, uh, got after us early, and then uh, held on down the stretch. Felt like they were very physical. I, I missed the game, but uh, in some of the pieces that I have seen, felt like they were very physical, especially when we got some paint touches. Yeah, um, 
you know, I think that, um, you know, they, they were very physical. And um, I, I felt like, you know, they did a good job of, I don't know what the foul count was, um, but I know that we left too many points on the foul line. Uh, I think that, you know, obviously you can adjust to how games ref. Uh, you know, we weren't getting those calls in the paint uh, at all. Uh, and as you can see, we're in there a lot. Yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe they did a better job of walling up than we did. But, you know, at the end of the day, we left 10 points on, on the foul line. And they did a great job of knocking down your free throw. So when you look at the start that we got off to and then you look at, um, you know, the foul line situation, uh, that's the difference in the ball game. And, and I told our kids, uh, we had 21 more possessions. Uh, we turned them over 22 times. We only had eight. And at the end of the day, you're not supposed to lose that game. And uh, we didn't step up and, and, and knock down shots, and, and we didn't take care of our deal. And um, thus, uh, that's why we had the result we did. Another 20-point game for Mia Long. She seems to be very consistent and very poised here of late as well. Um, I think the issue was didn't get the complimentary outside three-pointer to go in the game. We didn't. And, and you know, I think that um, – you know, obviously, as we're going through this uh, uh, stretch, you know, coming down, people are going to dare us to make shots. And uh, we have to be able to do that. We have the kids that are able to do that. And, I mean, you look at some of our halves. We put up 49 points and a half before. We put up 50 points and a half. And that, that's with uh, Sydney and, and that's without Sydney. And mm -hmm. so we've got to have the uh, confidence and everything else to, to um, you know, uh, step in and knock down shots. Uh, I tell people all the time, it's a copycat league. So, you know, the way that Anderson guards us is the way that everybody's guarding us right now. And, um, you know, you, 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 it just is what it is. It's a, it's a copycat league. So I'm sure, you know, next few years, everybody's going to be pressing and doing all this other stuff. But, you know, we've got to rise to that challenge and take it on and, and uh, do what we have to do and, um, you know, force people to play us different. Pioneers hit two three-pointers late, as you've just seen. They hit just four for the contest. Maddie Sutton finishing with 16 points and equaling her career-high 13 rebounds for her fourth straight double-double in the contest. Uh, and, again, it was just a little too a little too late yeah. uh, in the contest. And uh, Newberry was able to do things. Uh, they get the, the victory, 73-60 to 60 against Tusculum, who shot just 31% for the game. And, and I guess a defensive-minded team like Tusculum forcing the turnovers when you shoot – they see a team shoot about 50% for a game, yeah. you know, if they were hot. Oh, for sure. They, 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 they did a great job of knocking down shots. Um, you know, contested shots, you name it, they knocked them down. And, you know, first time we played them, uh, they didn't make those shots, and, and, and we were able to make some, some more shots. Um, but, you know, I, I tell our kids that you're going to have nights that you shoot the ball like that. Um, I was looking at Villanova the other night, and if it can happen to Villanova's men, uh, it could happen in Tuscan women's basketball. Yeah. So, um, but at the end of the day, you still have the ability to, to win the ball game. And I felt like we did. Um, I felt like, you know, obviously after that first quarter, we locked in a little bit better. Uh, we had some situations where, you know, we had the opportunity to step to the foul line and, and finish, and, and we didn't. We had the opportunity uh, to finish in the paint a couple times, uh, and we didn't. Contact or no contact, a lot of those should have been either and ones or a bucket. And so, um, when we went back and, and, and watched film of that game uh, yesterday, uh, we watched the first quarter. And um, we watched the first quarter and we compared it to some of the other quarters and the difference was drastic. Um, and so, you know, as a coaching staff, you know, we got to do a better job of getting our kids ready. Uh, and, and they will be because the road doesn't get any easier for us and, and it's time for us to, you know, uh, woman up, man up and uh, find a way. And the Pioneers Road doesn't get much easier. They take on a team that's just knocked off nationally ranked Catawba. We'll talk about that when we come back after this. This is Pioneer Basketball with Coach Devin Carter. Family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? you to us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. The Pioneer basketball with Coach Devin Carter. So the Pioneers go one and one last week. Still stay in the upper echelon in the elite in the South Atlantic Conference. Thanks to some other teams that are starting to really build their resumes and getting ready for the push here in this postseason. Yeah, it is still only the first week. We've just had Groundhog Day. We will have an early spring. Doesn't mean the season is over with. 
and the Pioneers travel to Wise, Virginia, then get a chance to host the Queens Royals on Saturday. First, UVA Wise coming off back-to-back -back wins. Marcy, mm -hmm. okay, but Catawba. Yeah. yeah. It was a head It was, you know, you turned your head yeah. in the South Atlantic Conference this week after they got that win. Yeah, and you know what? The thing about our league is I think that um, I was talking to another coach. I think the reason why our league is the best league in the region uh, and, and on this side of the Mississippi, as they say, is because uh, the bottom half of the league is is really good. Uh, you got teams at the bottom half that you know, back in you know back in the day, a long time ago, you used to write those in as victories. You know, you could say, man, well, I know I'm gonna get four, or I know I'm gonna get these six wins, but now you can't do that yeah. because anybody can beat anybody. I mean, I look at you know um, you know some of our games, and, and it's just been dog fights after dog fights, and uh, it's like the SEC. Uh, east of football, and SEC West of football uh, in the sack. So you've got to come prepared every single day, every Wednesday, every Saturday, because if you don't, uh, you have one lapse in, 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 um, in your prep, in your preparation, uh, it could cost you. They're second in the league in scoring. Big reason why they're knocking teams off from where they are. They're averaging 74 points per contest. They shoot 44% from the field. It's a good shooting team. And we're away from home. Plus, they feel like they really got one against us the last time that they, we played them. I yeah. mean, we had to really kind of earn that contest. Should be an interesting one on Wednesday. Turn around, then you get Queens to find themselves now down uh, 11th in the league. This is a team that, you know, has been rising, and then all of a sudden they've fallen off just a little bit. But here's another team that... To me, the personnel that's on this team extremely dangerous. Yeah, you, you look at, um, you know, going from a team that's high octane uh, like UVA Wise and then going to a team like Queens. It's two different styles. Uh, UVA Wise is going to play really fast. They're going to they're score the ball a lot. Uh, Queens is going to try to dump the ball inside uh, to their big post player raffling, and then they're going to try to attack you from the outside with Eanes. And um, so it's really two different styles. Um, you know, Queens is probably not going to play as fast as UVA wise. Um, but you're dealing with a UVA wise team that loses a Sunita Webb that were they were more block based off mm -hmm. the post. Uh, now they're more guard based. And then you go from that to going to Queens, who's more, you know, post based. And so we're going to have two different styles that we got to prepare for. Um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, this is another big week in the sack. Yeah. And, you know, your really good teams have to be able to win on the road, and then they got to protect home court. I think that for us, you know, our, our, our week has got to consist of great prep uh, and then a transition. We're going to have to pivot on uh, after Wednesday. We're going to have to pivot on Thursday and uh, get ready for Queens. Um, you know, we played Queens the first time. We missed 24 straight threes the first time we played them. Uh, best believe they're going to try to guard us the same way. Uh, if I had to guess, I think everybody from here on out is probably going to guard us the exact same way. And uh, I think it's going to be on, you know, our coaches, our coaching staff and, and our players to make that adjustment. Um, because I tell our kids, even, you know, without Sydney, we have the ability to still do what we need to do. Uh, our margin of error may not be as big or the same, uh, but we have the kids to do what we need to do, and we got to find a way to do it. Uh, we can't talk about it. Yeah. we got to do it. It's not the rims. Nothing to do with the rims. He's Pioneer Coach Devin Carter as the Pioneers. Entertaining week this week. UVA Wise on Wednesday, as mentioned. Uh, they do a phenomenal job with their uh, coverage on the media, so you can watch the game, maybe listen to us, but you can find that through the Pioneer website, through the basketball schedule on the women's side of things with live audio, uh, watch live, or even the live stats, wherever you may be. And then on Saturday, back at home on the Pioneer Sports Network, we'll provide the, co the, the uh, commentary. We'll also provide the pictures for the contest this coming Saturday, which is Alumni Weekend anticipating a lot of folks returning uh, over 50 already that have at least signed up or let us know that they are coming back so if you have not done that please visit online through TuscalumPioneers.com or get in touch with Josh Ely here in the athletics department and let them know that you're coming we'll provide you a, a meal we'll also provide you a nice little uh, gift and we'll recognize you during our contest this coming Saturday it's alumni weekend Tusculum versus Queens. For everyone involved with the Pioneer Sports Network, behind the scenes, he's Pioneer Coach Devin Carter, and I'm Brian Staten. And until next week, go Pioneers.